What is up guys, Brandon here with Wake Productions bringing you a new video. Um, the topic of today is diner results and how they can be misleading. Um, so this kind of stems from some comments I've been seeing recently on some high profile cars horsepower numbers. Um, some of the things that I'm accustomed to because I'm at altitude that I kind of took for granted that and kind of thought that was common knowledge. Um, it turns out that it's not really common knowledge, so I wanted to address my concerns for the sake of the community and um, hopefully educate you guys, the potential consumers, on how dyno numbers can be inherently overstated. Now the purpose of this video isn't about a malicious activity like somebody specifically manipulating dyno numbers to deceive the public or their consumer. Um, this is more of addressing the fundamental system that every manufacturer uses um, and the significant margins of error that can occur if somebody is making a purchasing decision based off of these numbers. So really it comes down to the SAE correction factor that is used on cars at altitude. Um, more specifically about high boost turbocharged vehicles but um, let's start really quick with a brief overview of what I'm talking about on my supercharged O3 Cobra back when it had the Eaton on it. So here's a dinograph of my 2003 Cobra when it had the Eaton on it and it'd be easy to say it made 430 horsepower and 446 foot-pounds of torque. Pound-feet, foot-pounds, don't matter. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, looking at those numbers, it just looks normal. So, um, there's a little bit of hidden trickery going on here. It's not real trickery. Um, there's an industry standard called SAE, which is essentially a way of the dyno computer correcting the numbers and estimating what the car would make at sea level. So, this 430 horsepower and 446 pound-feet is an estimate of what the car would make at sea level, not what it actually made up here. So, looking at the bottom of the graph, you can see SAE 1.25, meaning that in order to get to sea level, the computer based off of the algorithm set by the Society of Automotive Engineers assumes it needs to add 25% to my numbers, to what it actually made to give me a dyno number. So, you can see how that can kind of be misleading if somebody doesn't know. I mean, you can just walk up and say, yes, I made 430 horsepower, when in reality, the car on that day made somewhere around, what was that, like 360? Let me do the math here real quick. 344. So, it, made, it actually made 344, and you can see where the issue would be if the industry just ran uncorrected numbers all the time, because if I say I had a pulleyed Cobra that made 344 horsepower to the wheels, everybody would think my tuner was an idiot, when it's simply not the case. It's just a function of cars losing a crap ton of power when they come up to elevation. And in this case, um, I think you can see it, but it's saying 10 PSI. So you need to also understand boost scales a little bit differently up here. So boost is actually gauge pressure, which is pressure above ambient. So at sea level, I think you guys, the ambient pressure is like 14.7 PSI, whereas around here, it's around 12. So if you have 10 pounds of boost at sea level, you take 14.7 plus your 10, you get around like 24.7, which is what the motor is actually experiencing. But if you take that 10 PSI and add it to 12, you get 22 PSI, which is actually being seen by the motor. Of, of atmosphere um, so there's a three pound or two to three pound difference just in how it's being measured um, just because there's just so little air now on many supercharged cars when you take the SAE number the corrected number up here and go down to sea level you actually get really close to making the same amount of power as the computer was estimating now this is if you maintain the same pulley size your boost goes up and that is the reason why the numbers are pretty, pretty close. But the inherent issue here is when you have a correction factor like this 
and you take your car down to sea level, there is no guarantee that there's not going to be a bottleneck somewhere in your vehicle system. Say your exhaust doesn't flow enough, say you don't have enough fuel injector or fuel pump. So when you try to make the actual number that's listed corrected on your dyno sheet, you could run into a hiccup that wasn't foreseen and never hit that number that the computer's estimating that you would. Now, it gets even more complicated when you start talking about turbocharged vehicles because they're not tied to a set pulley size and they're not NA. So, the correction factor is actually pretty vastly overstated. So when turbocharged guys go down in elevation, they are not going to see the 25% gains that the computer is estimating that they will. Um, they will definitely see gains, but that's not even debatable. I mean, everybody that goes down there with a turbocharged car says, oh my god, the turbos come on so much quicker, they make more power. Not 25%, but there's definite benefits to turbocharged vehicles going down in elevation. Um, but you could kind of see where that's misleading, so if there's a manufacturer creating a turbo kit and they're saying they're making like 14 or 1500 horsepower and you don't know that that is a corrected number and you try to make that on your vehicle that's built the same and your motor explodes it's because their numbers are inflated and like I said you don't know if you're gonna run into a bottleneck when you bring that car down to sea level and attempt to make the same amount of power that the dyno graph showed at higher elevation now, like I said, this isn't specifically deceptive by a certain group. Everybody up here talks in SAE. Everybody, well, I think there's like one dyno shop that cuts the SAE correction factor in half, but that in itself, I mean, it might get you closer to accuracy, but it's still not perfectly accurate. I'm not aware of any correction factor on any dyno that is specifically written for turbocharged vehicles on high boost at altitude just because, I mean, why would the Society of Engineers sit down and figure out something like that when it's such a small segment of what we're doing here, um, a, such a small segment of consumers that it's neither here nor there. You just need to be an educated consumer when you are looking at dyno graphs. So then, um, something else I wanted to, well, a couple of things I wanted to address. Uh, number one, if you actually read the SAE paper on using the SAE correction factor, I believe it allows for a 6% variance versus sea level conditions, um, and it lists a huge amount of criteria that need to be used when the factor is being applied, and a lot of those aren't being followed either. So there's going, I mean, it's going to be an incorrect number if you're trying to determine what a boosted car at altitude would make at sea level. Um, but there is a benefit in using SAE regionally and comparing regionally, and that is because it does correct the number, and that should take up for, like I said, they had that 6% variance built in, so that will accommodate for different weather conditions. So if you're dynoing a car in midsummer and then you make a little bit of change and you dyno the car in the fall, um, the delta or the difference between the two could be representative of the modification you did between that time period. Um, and if you're wanting to compare car to car locally, it'll also work. But I mean really at the end of the day you have to realize that a dyno is there to provide a simulated test environment so you can make sure when you stress the car nothing's coming loose, nothing's blowing off. Um, like for example if a fuel rail blows off and you're going 140 miles an hour it gets under the car, catches on fire and kills you. Um, being in a simulated environment and finding that flaw is definitely preferable. Um, also, it is a great way to measure how the car is doing on fuel trims and all that, um, making sure everything's running fat and happy. Um, really just look at it as a calibration device and obviously as I've posted dyno results in the past, I'm part of it. Um, I've always tried to include the uncorrected numbers thinking that people could reason it out, 
but now that my YouTube channel has gotten a little bit larger and not as local, I kind of wanted to address what I've been seeing in the community and I wanted to educate you guys a little bit more. So I'm going to wrap up the video there. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any more questions, I'll be sure to try and address them as best I can. Um, with that being said, you guys have a good day. And as always, I'm just an asshole with an opinion on the internet, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. We'll see ya.